Hey there, Variety here. Welcome to today's video, and which will be talking about seven noob mistakes to avoid in Taurus Land Season 1. So many of you started Taurus Land Season 1 yesterday, and you're probably a few hours away from starting day two, which will unlock the first new bit of PvE content, which is really cool. But there are some other things that I learned on China that I want to share ahead of time so you don't run into the same kind of mistakes as some other people did. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Vigor Gain. So in Season 0, you gained Vigor passively, right? Just being having your character created. It doesn't work like that anymore. You gain Vigor by doing activities, right? So when you do an activity, you get Vigor. Basically, play the game, get Vigor to craft, right? So... The point I'm trying to get at here is that you have to play the game to get your vigor, but there's something else you need to know. So in your specialization section, your very first thing here is it increases the efficiency of converting activity into vigor by 50%, and the second one by 100%. So you should rush to get this specialization point so you can get more vigor from your activity so you can craft earlier, right? Obviously, it's very important. So the first two activity points that you're looking at is going to be this one here. So it's basically get 100 points in your profession, right? So just go gather on the ground. And the second one is going to be achievements in the second dungeon. So the dungeon that opens up on the second day, go through your achievement log and go to the dungeons and go down here. So I don't have it on this particular character, but you need these three here to unlock your second specialization point. You should be doing this early day two, so you can get both specialization points, get this to full, and then do your activity to get your maximum amount of possible crafting points early in Taurus Land at Season 1. Number two, challenge modes. So in Season 0, many people just kind of skip the challenge modes because they determine them to not give gear, so they shouldn't do it. It's unfortunate that some people look at content like that, but they've added, if you go back into the achievements and go to dungeons again, and you scroll down, clear the challenge mode of the elite difficulty once. 500 gold. Each of these four dungeons, I haven't done on this particular character, but each of these dungeons give 500 gold each. So that's a whopping 2,000 gold to each of your characters that just go through the challenge mode. And if I'm being real with you, the challenge mode in Season 1 Taurus Land is significantly easier than the challenge mode was in the dungeons for Season 0. So anybody should be able to clear the challenge modes without any issue at all. Unlock your achievements, get your free 1,000 free gold per character. Number 3, Star Clusters. So if you played Season 1, Season 0, you'll know that you're able to upgrade your gear using your star cores like this. And it allows you to upgrade your gear to plus one. We'll just do it here because we have extras and we're in China, so it doesn't overly matter. So as you saw, I was able to upgrade it once, right? Now that's because this is 150 gear. If I look for a piece of 160 gear on this character, see this one here, it's been upgraded twice. So the 160 gear could be upgraded twice, whereas the 150 gear could be upgraded once. So that's part of the information. The other thing that I want to mention is that you cannot transfer these boosted stats from another piece of gear. So if you look at the star cluster, it says you can consume star clusters to enhance the basic attributes of 150 or 160 gear score. So the important thing is, is that you can't transfer it. You have to sell the piece of gear and you only get half of your star clusters back. And you pretty quickly go from 150 gear to 160 gear. So I would recommend not using your star clusters on the 150 gear at all, and then saving it and only using it on the 160 pieces that you intend to keep. The 160 pieces will keep you until 170 pieces, which I believe is like a month in, right? So you definitely want to upgrade your 170 pieces twice rather than upgrade your 160 piece, break it down, and only get half of it back. It may seem like you get a lot of these initially, but you have to upgrade all of these pieces of gear twice. So you're going to need them. And it's really a lot of stats. So you're going to want to make sure that you don't mess this up. Okay, so let's talk about number four. 
dungeons and arcane realm. For some reason, people convinced themselves again that dungeon counter relates to arcane realm timer. It doesn't. By timers, I mean your reward chance. So if I open up dungeon on this character, you'll see that I have four chances here. And if I open up the arcane realm, I have two. The arcane realm and the dungeon are not connected. So the method that you should be doing is that you should be doing dungeons up until the day that the raids come out, which is day five. And before you go into the raid, you want to have done all your dungeon chances to get as much gear as you can. And then the gear that you don't have because you're unlucky or you have the wrong stats, you then come in and use your elementary tokens to buy whatever gear you are unable to get or whichever gear you don't like, right? So you're using your tokens to fix the gear at the end, right before the raid, rather than try to, you know, get the gear initially. This is the best way to make sure that you have the best gear going into the raid on day five. So please make sure you do your dungeon runs because you really do need the gear. Okay, number five, skip fishing. Now I know this may become as a bit of a disappointment to some people, but the fish in the new zone are just not worth it. So if you open up your bag and you go down to your bait, you'll see here that you have one purple, a bunch of blues and some greens. And on the blue bait, you have two purples, some blues and some greens. Even with the purple ruined bait, it doesn't really change. So the purple that it's talking about is here. The Dino Ice Sculpture Fish. All it does is give you 120 focus for five minutes. Like, that's, it's not very good. One piece of your gear gives you 400 focus. So the fish doesn't do anything. Um, so I'd strongly recommend not buying a bunch of bait and fishing. Uh, I tested this out on 500 bait just to be sure before I did this. Uh, I definitely strongly recommend that you save your silver because you're going to need it for all of your emblem, you know, upgrading in this season because it's going to be pretty harsh compared to season zero. Number six, friendship shop. So they've actually put some new stuff in the friendship shop, which makes it more worth looking at. So if we go to social, go to friendship shop and go to the bottom you'll notice a couple of things. One, you can buy starter clusters. These, I believe, will restore every week. So don't worry about the small counters. So you can buy the starter clusters. We talked about those early in the video, so you'll know why those are important. But you can also buy these boxes. For example, in the box, you can get tools to gather. You can get silver, or you can get sage crystals, which are really good as well. So basically, you're getting yourself free tools that you can use to gather. And all you need to do is get friend tokens. Friend tokens are pretty easy. All you need to do is when you're in some content, uh, go in with a guild member. Or if you don't have play with anyone, when you go into a dungeon, just add people. Just click on the interface and just add them. And then when you get to the end, you'll get your friend token and they'll delete them. It's easy. So just do that, get your friend tokens and buy your extra boxes. Number seven would be not taking advantage of your battle assist and auto cast feature. So this won't apply to all classes, but for a Paladin, for example, you're going to be casting Holy Hammer every 2.9 seconds, and you're going to be casting Holy Shield Bash every 6 seconds, and they're going to get lower when you get more cooldowns. So you're basically casting abilities extremely often, and it can be kind of annoying. So what you do is you open up your Battle Assist, you create a new one, and I've told it, cast Holy Hammer, basically, if it's off cooldown, it'll use it. And then next up, it'll use Holy Shield Bash. And then I put on Auto Cast and then I activate it, right? So you'll see here I have Battle Assist. And when I go into combat, you'll see that I have Auto. So this means it's Auto Battle. So right now, my hands are off the mouse and keyboard. And it's going to continue using those two abilities when they're on cooldown. You could easily use your other abilities in the global cooldowns between them. And this way, you can focus on two abilities rather than having to focus on two abilities, you're basically having to spam. This will help a lot of people that, you know, maybe don't have enough focus or, you know, as much experience. I want to be clear though, I don't recommend using this feature to try to chain together all your abilities in a way to maximize your damage. It's not really going to work. Like it'll work to a point, but you're never going to be very good if you do that. Um, just look through your class and see if you have two abilities that you use all the time. And just chain them together. It'll make your life, honestly, a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable rather than having to focus on one, two, one, two, one, two. Anyway, that's the seven new mistakes that I wanted to discuss today. Hopefully this video helps you avoid 
some of the pitfalls that other people have ran into and you know makes your gameplay experience more enjoyable in Tarzland season one until next time